Um, I, like I said, I've been using a tie down strap as you all had a good laugh over today. I use them to keep my kayak attached to the roof, uh, but you can use a belt, something along those lines. One thing I find with um, yoga, the, the impression of the word modification is that it makes it, makes it that you're not doing as much work as somebody else, or you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And something that a lot of yoga teachers are trying to change is that mindset. Aaron and Melissa know all about mindsets and changing mindsets. A strap is just an aid. It's just to help you. It does three different things. It can help with your alignment. It can help with deepening a stretch and it can help with lengthening a stretch. There are certain poses we do that we're trying to lengthen one part of the body, but it ends up compressing another part of the body. And by using a strap, you can eliminate that compression. Or if you are new to yoga and you're not sure, or even a veteran to yoga, it doesn't matter. You have to have your hips a certain way or your arms a certain way. A strap can let you know if you're starting to fall out of that. So it keeps your alignment in. And then if you're trying to just push a little farther, stretch a little farther, it can deepen with that. So today's class is going to be a little different, obviously, because we're going to be doing mostly straps. Uh, in a regular yoga class, you would not do an all strap class. It doesn't happen very often. So some things will flow and some things will not. It'll be interesting. We'll see how this goes. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start our yoga like we always do in a relaxed position, but we're going to do it in a relaxed butterfly or a reclined butterfly. So you're going to start with your soles of your feet together, and you're going to put your strap under your feet. You're then going to take that strap and loop it over your body so that it's on your back. And then you're going to want to tighten it. Not too much, but you're going to want to tighten it so that you can keep your feet as you move aligned. So to repeat that, the strap, you can put the strap around yourself first. It doesn't make a difference. You want the strap about here on your back along your waistband area and over top of the feet. And you might find that you can tighten it or loosen it as we go through. So once you're in this position, you are going to lay back. Okay, no Debbie Kelly, we don't have to wait for her. And no Megan, she's not gonna make it. She has to catch up on work. So once we're in this position, we're just gonna slowly bring ourselves back so that we're in a reclined butterfly. And you don't have to do anything else here but breathe. Just relax and breathe. If you feel like your strap is too loose, then tighten it. If it's too tight, loosen it. Find that Goldilocks moment. Using our strap here allows two things to happen. This allows alignment and deepening. We're able to keep our legs at a position that are comfortable. We're able to keep our feet together. If we didn't have the strap holding our feet together, they might be sliding out outside or they might be falling farther to the side. And because the strap is doing the majority of the work, our legs can just hang, gravity is working with them, and we're allowing the blood to flow back into the hips, bringing that moisture in there like we did with the yin the other day. You might choose to put your two hands on the thighs of your leg, just to give a little bit of extra weight, keep it a little bit more active. You might choose to put your arms overhead, opposite arms or opposite hands and opposite elbows. If that's more comfortable for you, give a little bit of an opening of the shoulders, the armpits. Just make sure that those shoulders are pushed away from the ears. Be mindful not to allow that arch in the lower back. Keep that belly button to the spine but don't strain. You're just relaxing here, just breathing. Good. 
Kelly, sorry to bother you, but I see an orange light. I believe that someone is trying to get in. No one's trying to get in. I just answered a chat. Oh, sorry. We're going to breathe here for about 30 more seconds. If your arms are overhead, go ahead and bring them back down to the side. You want to move one foot at a time here to get out of the strap because it is a little bit difficult depending on how tight you have. But once you have one foot out, you can go ahead and extend it. Remove it from the second one. Let's take that strap overhead, bringing it to the side. Extend the right foot up in the air and extend the right arm. Your arm reach your toes, then you have the longest arms of any human I've ever known. Or if your arms are nowhere near close to your toes, that's okay too. Take your strap, place it around the sole of that right foot, usually around the ball area. Now, with that right hand up, your arm is connected to your toes. We're lengthening our bodies, we're lengthening our position. All we've done is made our arms longer, go go gadget style. Keep the toes flexed, like straight. Never pull too far in as that will aggravate the hamstring. Find that comfortable edge. And when you're ready, drop the leg to the right. Using the strap as guidance, letting gravity do its work until you run into a wall or a couch or a stove, since Melissa's doing yoga in her, in her kitchen. Hopefully we have some room here. Letting the hip open, letting everything just sink in. Keeping the head straight at the ceiling or letting it rock from side to side, whatever is comfortable for you. Take a nice inhale, bring that right leg back up to center. Place the left arm on the strap along with the right and slide that right arm down a bit. Slowly bring the leg over to the left for a twist, letting that left arm do the guiding. The right arm is just there as needed. Allow shoulders to remain as close to the floor as possible, as close to that mat, bringing that deep twist into the side body. Remembering to breathe evenly. If you remove that right hand from the strap, go ahead and put it back on. Engage the core and on the inhale, bring that leg back up to center. Bend the right knee in, release the strap. Send the right leg straight out to the mat. You give it a little shake. And then go ahead and lift that left leg up in the air. Attach the strap around it. And give it a hold with the left hand. This is probably one of my most favorite yoga stretches for um, those that have taken, been taking my class for a while. I, I do like to do this one a good bit. It's called Titi Vasana. It has a fun name and it just feels so good on my legs. So go ahead and extend that right arm out to the side like a T. And when you're ready, drop the left leg over. Letting gravity do its work. Maybe you have a little bit more room on this side. Take a nice inhale, engage that core, bring the leg back up to center. Place the right hand 
above the left on the strap and slide that left arm down. And on the exhale, bring that leg over to the right for your twist. Maybe releasing the left arm to the side, keeping those shoulders flat against the mat. Remembering that yoga should be free from distractions, doing the best you can to not let those distractions in the outside world invade your practice, not worrying about the giant hairballs that are currently underneath my couch that I'm looking at, or the spider that's crawling across the ceiling. Be mindful in your practice, be mindful in your position. Take a nice inhale, engage that core, bring the legs back up to center. Two hands on the strap, release that strap, bring the left leg down. Give it a little shake out here. Bring yourself up to seated with your legs straight out in front of you. And then go ahead and take that strap and put it around your feet again. This is a perfect example of a posture that is supposed to be lengthening your body, but when we do it, it makes a compression. So if we drop our strap for a minute and try to touch our toes, when we go ahead and reach for our toes, we are strength, uh, lengthening our calves and our hamstrings and our hips, but we're compressing our belly muscles. We're taking those abdominal muscles and we've crunched them in and that's not helpful. So by keeping the strap on our toes and using our hands farther up the strap, we can lengthen our legs, but not compress that belly space. It's open here. I can send my heart forward. I can sit up nice and straight. And then I just gently pull forward with those hands. If I want, I can bring that strap together, maybe walk my hands a little closer, continuing to keep the back straight, continuing to shine that heart forward, but still stretching the back of the leg. Holding here for three more breaths. The full posture of this will allow your two hands to go completely around your feet. And I don't know anyone that can do that. Maybe Ramona, she has nice long arms. One more breath here and release. Bring yourself back to seated. Go ahead and remove that strap. I'm gonna to turn to face you. You're gonna stay facing the front of your mat, but this is a little bit easier to see. I want you to take your right leg and bend it across the left. Go ahead and hug that knee in for a minute. Maybe rock it from side to side. A little bit of a hip opening there. Making sure that we sit up nice and straight. Inhale the arms up above your head. Exhale, drop the right arm behind you and bring the left arm across the knee for a seated twist. With every bit of inhale, extend the body up. With every exhale, we twist a little farther. I do wish I had a visual for this next part. To truly do a seated twist, a yogi is supposed to be able to take this left arm that is across their knee, bend it through that right arm while taking the right arm and wrapping it around their back and somehow connecting their hands. So yeah, that's not gonna happen, at least not in this house. If it's happening in your house, that's amazing. So take your strap, feed it between your legs. That, right, uh, that left arm that's across the knee is holding on one side. The right arm that's behind rotates internally to grab the strap. And now we are in that bind bound position. You might find two things that happened. I'm gonna turn so you can see my back here. When we are without a strap and we hold, we have a tendency to kind of sink ourselves down. By using that strap to connect the bind, you should find that your shoulders push back a little bit more. Your posture comes a little bit higher. So you're just holding. You're not doing anything extraordinary. Let's go ahead and release back to center. Bring that right leg out in front. Shake it out for a minute. Bring the left leg up. Give it a nice squeeze. Maybe rock from side to side. 
then cross it over the right leg. Inhale the arms up. Sitting up nice and tall, exhale the left arm behind you. Cross that right arm over the knee. With every inhale, we sit a little taller. With every exhale, we twist a little farther. One more breath here. Let's go ahead and untwist, pick up that strap. Place the strap between those knees. And then we'll twist again in our bind. And I do encourage you to Google a seated bind, seated twisting bind. It is pretty impressive for those that have the ability to do it. Again, notice how those shoulders come back a little bit more. We sit up just a little bit taller. We'll hold this for two more breaths. And release back to center. Go ahead and straighten that left leg out. Give them a little shake. This next portion you can do in a variety of ways. You can stay seated like this. You can come to an easy seated pose. You can cross your legs in a cow face position or I'm gonna come up on my knees because it's just a little bit easier to move and to do some of these things. So what I'd like for you to do, take your strap and bring your hands about four inches past shoulder width. And on the inhale, you're gonna bring your arms up. You're gonna exhale over to the right. Inhale, back up. Exhale, arms to the back, to the point where you can start to feel that compression. Inhale, arms back up top. Exhale, to the left. Inhale, up. Exhale, bring back front. For each one of these shoulder movements, the goal is to keep those shoulders away from the ears, but to open them with fluid that's going in, holding them as we need to. So again, inhale up nice and slowly. Exhale over to the right. Inhale up. Exhale, bring the arms back. Inhale up. Exhale, other side. Inhale up, exhale forward. One more time, inhale the arms overhead. Exhale to the left. Inhale up, exhale arms behind. Inhale arms back overhead, exhale to the right. Inhale overhead, exhale, bring the arms down. Go ahead and take the strap and bring it behind you. Bring the arms up behind you and maybe you fall forward to release that movement that we just did. And depending on what position you're in, seated wise will depend on how far you can get your hands. Maybe they just are right next to your back. Maybe they didn't move much at all. Just a little bit of a counter to the motion we did. Take one more breath here. Exhale, bring the arms back down. Let's go ahead and unhook our straps, unstrap our straps. So you have a nice long strap. And then you're gonna take the center of the strap and put it along the lower part of your ribs along the back. So for us ladies that might be wearing a sports bra, kind of right underneath that sports bra area and that small of the back. Then you're gonna take the two sides and you're gonna put one over each shoulder. So it looks a little like you have a backpack on. You can see those backpacks. I should have picked a different color top because my strap matches my top, sorry about that. And then slightly tighten them 
as you bring them around. And then go ahead and grab the straps from behind. So you again have this backpack kind of look going across that small in the back, coming up over the armpits, down the back, and you're holding the straps here. You should automatically feel those shoulders drop. You should feel them pull away from your ears. If you lift your arms up a little bit, you can feel the shoulders roll back. If you lift them up at that 90 degree angle, you should see them roll back. This um, backpack strap, it doesn't really have an official name, is an excellent complement to fish that we did the other day. You let the shoulders rock open in that fish with that block, then you can go ahead and use this backpack to pull them down even farther. Go ahead and take two more breaths here. And then go ahead and release the straps. Take them off the arm, take them off the back, and we'll meet in a tabletop position. If extended kneeling is a little bit tough for you, feel free to stick an extra blanket underneath there. We're gonna put our strap to our side for the moment. Remember that in our tabletop, hips are above the knees, shoulders are above the wrists. On the inhale, we're gonna drop the belly, lift the head for a cat or for a cow. And on the exhale, we're gonna round out to a cat. Inhale to your cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale to your cat. And then return to a neutral tabletop. Extend the right leg behind you, feeling that length from your toes all the way up to your head. Take a nice inhale. And on the exhale, crunch your knee to your nose. If you need the blocks to rise up your arms to get that knee underneath, feel free, feel free to use it. Inhale, extend the leg back. Exhale, knee to nose. Making sure to arch that back in that same cat position to get the knee up there. Inhale, extend the leg. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, extend the leg. This time, bend the knee up and then see if you can reach towards the ceiling. While reaching towards the ceiling, reach the shoulders back and the head back. This is called tiger pose. A little bit of tribute to Tiger King here. And it's not very easy. There's a lot of things working against us here. There's, we're trying to lengthen the front body, but we're compressing that lower back. So let's go ahead and return to neutral tabletop and grab our friend the straps. Keeping the strap unhooked. I think unhooked will be beneficial here. Wrap it around your right foot, base of your right foot. Then run that right hand all the way up to the top and bring it over your shoulder. As you come back forward into tabletop, your right foot will rise and your right arm will rise and your tiger will be more supported. Here we're able to lengthen that front body without compressing the lower back. Holding here for three, two, one. Release the strap. Bring the leg and the hand back down to the mat. Kickstand the left foot out. Extend that right leg behind you and peel open to a half moon. Take one more inhale here and return to our tabletop. And sit back for a brief child's pose. Kind of reset those hips, give the knees a break. Maybe rock from side to side here. Release those shoulders. <coughs> Excuse me. Allowing the chest to fall into the floor. We'll take one more inhale here and we'll exhale back up to tabletop. This time extend the other leg behind you. 
Raise it up nice and straight. Feel that length from your toes to your head. Take a good inhale. And on the exhale, crunch the knee to the nose, rounding out the back to get it there. Inhale, extend. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, extend. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, extend one more time. Bend the back leg. Look up towards the ceiling. Press that leg up towards the ceiling for your tiger pose. Feel that crunch in the lower back. Hopefully you don't feel that crunch in the lower back, but if you do, you'll know what I'm talking about. Go ahead and release that tabletop. Take your strap, place it along that back foot. Bring it up and over the shoulder. Bringing yourself back down into the tabletop, lifting that leg and arm for your tiger pose, opening that front body space without compressing the lower back. Holding here for two more breaths and releasing back to tabletop and into our child's pose. <sighs> maybe take a quick drink of water, maybe come up into hero, just where you're resting on your knees. So then we're gonna need to strap our strap back together again. The tough part about straps is the constant tightening, untightening, loosening, unloosening. There we go. From tabletop, we're gonna tuck our knees, press up our hips into our down dog. Settling here for just a moment. Walking out our dog if we need to. We're not gonna do very many down dogs today, but it still feels good. Shake that head, yes. Shake the head, no. Always ending on a yes. Your dog becomes still. Take a nice inhale, and on the exhale, just walk your hands back to meet your feet. Bend the knees a lot, place the hands on the knees, come rolling on up to standing. Okay, so most of those arm movements that we did on the knees, actually all of those arm movements you did on your knees, you could also do while standing. So you can do the up, back, right, and left, and so on. You can do that standing. We're not gonna do that standing again, but just know you don't have to be on your knees to do that. Standing is good. Uh, place your strap underneath one of your feet, and then I want you to tighten it so that the circle is just below the belly button. So if my belly button is here, my circle is just below that belly button. I'm not sure if you can fully see that, but it's got about an inch below the belly button underneath the one foot. Place that right foot underneath the strap and then step the left foot through. Coming into a warrior one position with that right foot at about a 45 degree angle, the strap should be starting at the back of that right foot, coming up to your left thigh. You should notice that it won't let you go farther than 90 degrees. Your knee should be 90 degrees above your ankle, directly above it. Your hip is facing forward. It won't allow you to move outside of that. Let's go, inhale, raise the arms up. Remember that back foot's at about a 45 degree angle. The strap is there to make our legs stronger, keeping our alignment in position. Exhale, let's cactus our arms for a brief shoulder stretch. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, reach the arms behind you. I know we don't have a strap right now, unless you happen to have two. Interlace those fingers, bow forward, humble warrior. Inhale, rise up, warrior one. If you start to feel that strap loosen, then you know that what something is out of alignment. Might need to move that foot a little bit, might need to move that leg, so on. Take an inhale and slowly come up on the back foot. Lean your body forward, rising up into a warrior three. We worked, there's Daji, hi Daji. We worked on warrior three the other day. Now we have a supported warrior three. Exhale, return to warrior one. Straighten the front leg, keeping that foot at the back 45 degree angle into our pyramid pose. 
and reach forward. Notice as you reach forward, the strap stops that left hip from reaching itself, it's keeping it square with the right. Reach forward to a pyramid pose. I really wish my blocks were not out of reach because it would be a great place to have some blocks. Hold here for two, one. Rise up, warrior one. Step that left foot back to meet the right, back into mountain. Let's go ahead and switch. Let's place the strap over the underneath the left foot. Keep that small on the left foot. Step the right foot through into that warrior position. Turn the left foot about 45 degrees out, keeping that right hip shining straight with the left, knee above the ankle, all those normal things. And go ahead and extend those arms on the inhale. Maybe this time we take an exhale to a brief back bend. Inhale, rise up. On the exhale, shift that weight a little bit forward. Coming forward into our warrior three. If it's okay for your arms to be straight, let your arms be straight or bring them down to your side. Or even you can bring them back to the strap if it helps keep your legs in position. Step back into warrior one. Straighten that front foot. I personally just felt my strap loosen, so that means my back foot is not in the right position. I turn it back to its 45 degrees. Bend forward, pyramid pose. Inhale, rise up. Back into that warrior one. Step the right foot back to meet the left. Mountain pose. Go ahead and release the strap from your feet. Take a minute to shake it off. I'm going to change location so you can see me. We're going to work on tree with a strap. It helps with our balance. It helps with worrying about that bottom leg. So let's go ahead and place our strap underneath that left foot. And we're going to hold it with our left hand. We're going to guide with the right and hold with the left. So we turn that left knee out. Maybe we start just here on our calf holding it in place with our left hand. We don't have to worry about the strength of our leg now. We're just worried about the balance portion. Maybe you can lift it up a little bit higher. Put it on that inside thigh. Again, you're not worried about holding the leg. The leg is holding itself with the strap. We're just worried about the balance. Inhale, grow your arm. Grow your tree with your right arm. Exhale and release the right arm, release the left leg, release the strap. Supported tree, let's switch sides. Go ahead and place that strap underneath the right foot. So the strap's gonna remain in the right hand, but we'll use the left hand to help guide it up. We shift the weight into the left foot. We rise it up to our calf. Maybe it holds here. Maybe we can go a little bit higher with this one. Maybe we fall over. Okay, guess we're staying on our calf today. Once you have your leg in position, bring that left hand up to grow your tree. Holding here for three, two, one. Exhale, release that left arm. Release the right leg and the strap. Do a brief standing waterfall. Excellent. Let's go ahead and place that strap again underneath our left leg, left foot. Shift the weight to the right and lift the leg up in front of you. Using your hand, walk it forward. Again, you're supporting your leg with the strap. You don't have to worry about that strength. When you're ready, open to the side, just like we had done laying down. Inhale, bring the leg back to center. Release the leg down, and we'll shift sides. Place that strap underneath the right foot. Holding it with the right arm, that right hand, we shift the weight into our left, and we lift it up in front. 
bring it out to the side. Maybe using that left arm to counterbalance on the other side. Feeling that hip opening, making sure we're using our drishti point, things that are not moving. Holding here for five, four, three, two, one. Bring the leg back to center. Release the leg, release the strap. And a brief standing waterfall. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, we'll go one more standing posture here. Our dancer pose. We're going to take our strap and place it under or over our left foot there. So let's bring our left foot up on our toes, putting the strap there. There we go. I can speak English here. We're going to shift the weight into our right leg. And as we lift the back leg up with our strap, we bring our right hand up to meet the left into a basic dancer. Think about that ballerina in the music box that we see all the time. A perfect dancing position has our toe come all the way up to meet our hand. I don't know anybody who's flexible enough to do that. Maybe you hold here. Maybe you start to bend forward, balancing your dancer with your arms up and that kicking that leg back. This is again one of those positions where we're looking to lengthen our hip opening but we can have a tendency to compress our back body. This is allowing us to not compress that lower back. Take one more inhale here, rise back up, release the arms, release the strap, shake those legs out. Go ahead and come up on the right toe, place that right toe on the other side of the strap, shift the weight to the left, bring those arms overhead. As you bring those arms, it lifts the leg, for your dancer. Again, maybe you stay here. There's nothing wrong with staying here. Maybe you slowly bend forward, allowing that back leg to kick out, that front body to shine forward. Three, two, one, release those arms, release the legs, release the strap, shake it out. Ooh. Let's go ahead and put our feet a little bit farther than hip bone distance apart, placing the strap under our right toe, that right um, ball of our foot. So we're gonna step the left leg, nope, sorry, getting my right and left mixed up here. Placing the strap underneath the ball of the left foot. Strap, step the right leg through and face the toes to the front in your triangle position. So legs are straight. The Daisy, ball of you have a suggestion for those of us that don't have straps that tie. Sorry, Kelly? You have suggestions for those of us that don't have straps that are long enough to make a circle like that. Sure. If you, is it long enough to come to up to your hips? Yeah, like on the first one, I just held it in my hand around the hip. Yep. But my mom and dad have the exact same straps as I do, so I figured I better ask. Okay, so then yes, you, the best thing you could do would be to hold it. You're not gonna get the same um, hip alignment, but if you're holding it, let me turn this way, it might help with the angle. If you're holding it, it'll remind you that your hip has to stay in that position. You can kind of push in with your fingers while holding the strap to stay there. Good question, Kelly, sorry. For those that do have straps that are long enough. Sorry, go back to this. Stepping through. We're in our triangle position. It's keeping our hip in the front. And when you kick it back, sorry, my mat's a little slippery today. When you kick, kick that back heel back, you should, that back hip back, your strap should loosen a little bit. That's how you know you're in the right spot. Maybe you keep your hands on your hips. Maybe you extend them for your triangle. If you have that strap that needs to be held, again, you can use your hands as a guide that your hip is back where it needs to be. On the inhale, rise back up. Grab your strap, bring your feet back together, and we'll switch sides. So again, our legs are about just outside of hip bone width. 
putting the strap underneath the right leg, stepping the left leg through, facing that left leg parallel to the mat. Keeping our leg straight, we kick our right heel back, and we notice that our strap starts to loosen. We reach forward for our triangle. Oops. Strap is not cooperating here. Inhale, we rise up. Exhale, arms to the side, step those feet back together, and we can release the strap. Kelly, do your straps not tie at all, or they're just not long enough? Um, we could probably knot them, but they wouldn't be long enough. These straps have loops along the way, so it's easy to like put your foot in a loop, but it's not okay. tie like you're doing with those. Okay, I, just, I needed to know that for the next piece. Okay, so we're gonna come back down onto our knees. And if you have a strap like Kelly and mom and dad that we need to tie, you can actually physically tie it this time. What we need is a loop that's about the length of your shoulder width. So you want your loop to be about shoulder width. So if you can knot it, knot it. And then once you have it about shoulder width, you're going to put your arms through your strap. And you're gonna bring it just above the elbows. Don't worry about the excess piece. So again, about shoulder width, just above the elbows. And then we're gonna place our arms farther out like we're gonna come into high plank. But we're gonna first start on our knees. Because it's a little scary the first time you do this. So on your knees, bring your body forward like you're in a plank and then lower like you're gonna do a push-up. Your strap should stop you. This is chaturanga. This is yoga push-up chaturanga. Your arms are in, you're at that 90 degree angle. The strap is not letting you go any farther. This is where your arms need to be. So when you're doing your yoga practice and your elbows start to bow out in a chaturanga or they're coming here when you're trying to do a different move. Think about how this strap feels in this position. So you lower down and your chest sits right inside that strap. If you can, lift the knees for that high plank. Holding here for three. Two, one, bring the knees back down to the mat. Push yourself back to a little brief child's pose. Give those arms a break. Inhale back up into tabletop. Tuck your toes. Bring your knees up. Walk your arms back to the back of your mat into a yogi squat. Again, our arms are in this sling. Place your hands down on the mat in front of you so that your knee is sort of touching that area just above the elbow along that strap on both sides. Shift forward, lifting the hips. Maybe you stay here. We're looking at a point in front of our fingers. We're not looking down. If we look down, our body goes down. Our head is forward. Maybe you shift far enough forward that you can lift one foot. Maybe you put that foot back down and you lift the other. Maybe you shift far enough forward to come into your crow. This is the basic arm position for most inversions. Head stands, arm stands, um, tripods, all that stuff. So just play around here. See if you can get into a crow. When you're ready, bring the heels back down to the mat. Raise the arms up. Go ahead and remove the strap. It does put a little bit of pressure on that back arm, but it lets you know where your arms are supposed to be to do those moves. Because when you're going strapless, your arms are here 
and you might find that they start to bow out. You never want your arms to bow out. They need to stay in that 90 degree chaturanga position. Right. Let's come down all the way to our bellies. Loosen up that strap a little bit. Come all the way down to our belly. Place your hands underneath the shoulders. Lift up, baby cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, release. Bring those arms behind you. On the inhale, lift the chest up. Lift the arms up. Exhale, release. Inhale, chest and arms. Maybe you lift the feet. Superman. Exhale, release. Bring the two legs. Oh, let's do one at a time. Go ahead and bring your left leg up behind you. Reach back with your left arm. Quad stretch. Can't reach with that left arm? Use your strap. Place the strap on the left foot. Pull it forward, quad stretch. Release the strap, release that left leg. Shimmy the hips back and forth, sending some breath to that lower back. Then shift to the right. Put that right foot up behind you. Place the strap around the foot for that right side quad stretch. Release the right leg, release the strap. Send breath to that lower back. Shake those hips a little bit. This time use the strap to hook around both feet. Oops, I think I twisted my strap. I'm being attacked by my strap. Sorry, reset. You're gonna lift both feet up behind you. We're gonna put that strap around both feet if it wants to cooperate this time. There we go. Reaching our hands back. We can kick our feet out, lift our hands for boat. Maybe have a nice big wide boat like I do here. Maybe your strap's a little bit shorter and you're able to bring it in a little bit farther. You can reach those arms overhead. You can rest your hands on top of your head. One more inhale here. Exhale, release. Again, send breath to that lower back. <coughs> Excuse me. When you're ready, push yourself up to kneeling and have a seat on your bums. Strap is a mess. Okay. And so leave the strap to the side for a moment. Shift your weight back onto your sit bones. Lift your legs. Keep your back stretched. Boat pose. If you can, straighten the legs. High boat. You should feel the engagement of the core muscles. You should feel the engagement of the legs. You might be shaking a little bit. I personally am shaking a little bit you might notice that your lower back is starting to round. You don't want to round in a boat position. Let's go ahead and release back to seated. So this is where the strap can help us. We're still gonna be building core muscle, but we are gonna be able to do so without damaging that lower back. So place the strap along the balls of the feet. Let your arms slide back a little bit. Lean back on those sit bones. Notice how just by having our hands on this strap, I can now make sure that my back is straight, my chest is up, my arms are bent at a 90 degree angle. 
I'm still getting that same core work. I'm still getting that same stretch along the hamstrings, but I'm not worried about that rounding of the lower back. I can use the strap to keep my back straight, keep my chest up. We can lower to a low boat. Rise up high boat. Low boat. High boat. One more time, low boat. High boat. Release back down to the mat, release the strap. Let's go ahead and come back on our back. Keep the right leg bent, cross the left leg over, figure four position or reclined pigeon. Take that strap, place it along the sole of the right foot. Now we have a reclined pigeon with a strap. Instead of trying to get our, let our arms in between our legs to support that right leg, now my strap is doing it. Pulling in here, feeling that hip stretch, maybe rocking from side to side. Let's bring the right foot back down to the mat, left foot next to it. We can keep that left foot there holding the strap, cross the right foot over, bring it up, reclined pigeon. Holding here, rocking from side to side, a few circles. Release the legs back down to the mat. Let the strap fall to the side for a second. Shake the legs out, loosen the hips. So for Kelly, mom and dad, since you have hooks on your straps at the end, if I'm understanding correctly, you're gonna to wanna to hook your two feet into the straps. Just hook your one foot into the strap, hold the other side with your hand. For the rest of us, you're gonna put your left foot along the strap, along that ball of the foot. You're then gonna take your strap and place it behind your head. This is a very strange position to be in. It's called a hammock, it's a yoga hammock. So we want our strap along the ball of our left foot. We want it placed around the center of our head, probably just below your ponytail, depending on where it is. And then you're just gonna lay back and you're gonna hang, and your leg and your head are gonna be perfect seesaws to each other. So if you have that um, hook, like Kelly was talking about, you've got it in your left leg, you're wrapped around, and maybe you're holding your arm out for that other side. And then go ahead, let's bring the right leg up. It's gonna take the place of the left. Your head's gonna rock a little bit. And then you place the left leg down. Now we're hammocking on the right. You can adjust the length of your hammock if your strap is long enough. This is a wonderful restorative posture because the body is really not doing much work here. The legs are in the air, so the blood is flowing a different direction. If your strap is long enough or you have hooks on both, let's go ahead and put both feet into the strap, head behind that, or the strap behind the head, and let's hang with both feet. Takes a little bit of adjusting. Takes a little bit of getting used to.
Let's take two more breaths here. I could sit here all day. Bend the knees, bring them in. And release the strap, hug the knees nice and tight. Maybe rocking from side to side here. Massaging out that lower back. A few clockwise circles. A few counterclockwise circles. Take a good inhale, squeeze those knees in. Exhale, full body stretch, side it out. Let's go ahead and bring that left leg in. Twist the left leg, hug it nice and tight. Maybe rock from side to side. And when you're ready, pull that left leg over for a full body twist. You could use a strap here if you're so inclined. You can take that strap, place it underneath the left knee and over the right shoulder. I'm not sure if you can see this in the video or not, but it, <laughs> if I roll up like this, you can see how my left knee is in the strap and my, left, my right shoulder is in that strap and it's just making the leg hang there. All it does is it means my right arm doesn't have to work as much allow that leg to hang. Inhale the left leg back to center. If you have a strap, remove the strap. It's going to be really hard to straighten the leg if it's there. Give it one more good squeeze in. And release side out. Go ahead and pull that right leg in. Give it a nice tight hug. Maybe rocking from side to side. And when you're ready, the left arm pulls that right leg over, full body twist. Again, you can use your strap if you want to. Placing that strap around that right knee and then over the left shoulder. Just allows my arms to be free, my leg to hang, let gravity do its work. Inhale that leg back up to center. Release the strap if you have one. Give it one last good squeeze. Send the leg out long, arms overhead, full body stretch, side out. And settle in for your Shavasana. Remembering why you came to the mat today, why you're taking this hour to dedicate it to yourself, why our bodies need these hours, our somewhat technology-free hours, our non-distraction hours. Even if we can't get an hour a day, try to give ourselves 10 minutes a day. Let the body sink into the mat. Start to bring awareness to the space around you. Maybe wiggle your feet and toes and your hands. Maybe rock that head from side to side. When you're ready, roll over onto that right side. Taking a few breaths here. And rising up to seated when you feel ready. Remembering that yoga is not a workout, it is a work in. 
and this is the point of the spiritual practice, to make us teachable, to open our hearts and focus our awareness so that we can know what we already know and be who we already are. As always, if we could turn our sound and videos and all that good stuff on so that we can close our practice together. Just by space, bringing our hands to heart center and our thumbs to our lips and to our third eye. From the light that shines in me to the light that shines in you, we bow to one another and say, Namaste. 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 Thank you. Um, so remember.